Hey everybody, Steve Minter here. Tonight I finally took a break from seeing Spider-Man No Way Home and went and saw American Underdog, the Kurt Warner story. Uh, anybody that saw a video I made two weeks ago, I, I referred to why I was actually going to see this movie. And when I went there, they actually showed Nightmare Alley instead, which it was supposed to be like an investor's, uh, I guess, screening of the movie. And at, at that time, the movie was, was listed as two hours and 12 minutes long and now it's actually listed as one, one hour and 52 minutes so they've actually made some edits to the movie since then um and I'll, I'll link the video where i where i talked about it you know down here I'll, I'll link the video to this to this video but uh it's just strange how that happened but so i finally got to see it uh this movie is you know of course about kurt warner he's a he's a retired nfl quarterback that actually is a hall of famer now and he if, if anyone that knows the story I, i'll not really give spoilers to the movie so much. I'll just talk about his personal life. Uh, but they'll know that he, he played for a one double A college uh, called University of Northern Iowa. And he was undrafted in the NFL. Um, he played, you know, he played some arena football. And then uh, in his uh, around, I don't know, 25, 26, he finally got a call from the St. Louis Rams. And uh, just incredible what a story, how it, how, how it went for him after that, it, you know, it just he, anybody that knows the Rams at that time, the late '90s, they were called the greatest show on turf because they, you know, they played on AstroTurf just like the Indianapolis Colts, uh, and they actually got a player from, from the Colts, uh, Marshall Falk, was was traded to the St. Louis Rams, and uh, people that know the story just said that 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 team was just incredible. If they went to the Super Bowl. Um, but uh, Kurt Warner's uh, backstory is just amazing, and uh, I thought this movie it, it had it had quite a bit of football in it. Uh, but I was kind of surprised at how much of a story they, they gave away from football, and it's it's all centered around football. So anybody that's a sports fan, you know, this is definitely a sports movie. It's just it gives a lot of his backstory. But uh, the per the guy that played uh, Kurt Warner is uh, Zachary Levi. Uh, you would know him now as Sh uh, Shazam. He was also on the TV show Chuck at one time, and he's in uh, one of the Thor uh, Ragnarok. He's in the, in that movie, but um, he it, it's interesting because uh, Zachary Levi is like forty one now. So <laughs> the fact that he's playing somebody that's in his like mid mid twenties is kind of strange. You know? um, but it also has uh, Anna Paquin. Um, she played Rogue in the X Men franchise, and also on the on the vampire show True Blood. She's in this. Uh, it has a uh, Dennis Quaid. He plays a uh, Dick Vermeil. Uh, anybody that knows the NFL will know that Dick Vermeil coached for the uh, Philadelphia Eagles, and then he was with the St. Louis Rams, and then he uh, finished his, his uh, coaching career with the Kansas City Chiefs. But he's he's a guy that really wore the, his heart on his sleeve. You know, the, the guy was really emotional. He loved football. He loved people. Um, and he would he would cry sometimes at, at press conferences because he was so emotional and just just uh, just loved loved his players so much and and I thought Dennis Quaid did a good job of uh, uh, showing him, you know, playing that character and also has a uh, Bruce McGill uh, anybody that from, that's familiar with Animal House he played D Day <laughs> he plays uh, Kurt Warner's Arena Football League coach <laughs> he's great in the movie and and then also uh, it has a uh, uh, Adam Baldwin he played the college uh, coach. And this, uh, so I, I, I gave this movie a uh, four stars and a heart on Letterbox, just because uh, anybody that loves a good sports story, a good uh, inspirational story, will will really like this. I think, and I, I'll I'll probably see it again sometime someday. I, I don't know if I'll buy it on Blu-ray or not, but but uh, I really enjoyed it though. I, it was it was worth the two week wait to finally see it. So. Um, and, and, the, and also, like I said, I'm, I'm on Letterboxd, uh, also under Excelsior Movie Reviews, and I'll put that my review on there as well. So um, if uh, if I don't see, if I don't make a video tomorrow night uh, on New Year's Eve, I'd like to wish everyone a happy new year. Hopefully everyone can stay healthy in 2022 and finally get past COVID-19, finally get everyone healthy, get things normal again. Um, it may not, it may continue on next year, but uh, hopefully we will get the numbers down and uh, people will get healthy and get, get things, get, get things rolling. You know, I think we had a good summer this year and hopefully next spring and summer will, will be, will be fun again. So, 
please uh, consider uh, uh, subscribing to my channel and put a like on the video. And Happy New Year. Thank you.